it's Wednesday, so that means some legato exercises for you. We're gonna start with a lick, as you saw, and then we're gonna go straight into an exercise that can really help you with your pinky when it comes to the legato. You can also alternate pick this one, but it's legato Wednesday after all, so today we stick to legato. Also, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter and you'll get access to 17 free lessons straight away and then you get a series of exclusive lessons, both in text and also video, that you won't find anywhere else. Alright, here's the slow version. We start on the 10th fret of the A string. So this lick is based on the G Dorian scale, but it's actually only one note that makes it Dorian, and that's when we get to the top of the arpeggio here, this natural sixth. The rest of it is basically just the G minor pentatonic. Start with a G minor 7 arpeggio, we have 10, 13 on the A string, 12, 10, 11, 10, 13. And the way that I picked this is down, hammer, down, 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 up. Then I do a pull off, up, down, down, down. Then again, up, pull off, up, down, down, down. And the notes on the top here is... And these three notes are just part of the, the, the big shape, so to speak. The only thing that we change here is that we go to three string sweep instead. After that, we're gonna play this sequence on the high E string. And what this is, is just a G minor pentatonic with three notes per string. It's kind of stretchy. Uh, the notes here will be 10, 13, 15. And if you number the notes from left to right, one, two, three, the sequence I'm playing is three, one, two, three, two, one on the high E string. Then I'm gonna move to the next string without picking. There's a hammer on from nowhere. You can pick it if you want, but I don't in this case. Uh, then I'm playing 11, 13, 15, but now the sequence will be 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. And again, the numbers are, if you number the notes from left to right, 1, 2, 3. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. And that sequence will be played on the remaining strings. Uh, so the next string, we're gonna play 10, 12, 15, same sequence. Same fingering on the next string. And then we have the same fingering on the A string as we had on the high E string. And slide back to the flat 7. And then back to the root. Put that together. Alright, so this exercise will really help you if you have trouble using your pinky when it comes to legato. And this exercise is also really good for working on your picking as well. So you can try it both ways. But since it's Legato Wednesday, we're gonna stick to Legato. And as usual, if you want tabs for everything, go to my Patreon and you get access to the entire lesson library and all that stuff. But hopefully if you just follow along here, you'll get it anyway. So this exercise then is gonna be played in two ways, or you can do it in two ways. I like to do it systematically, meaning I'm gonna use one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, and two, three, four. So the four available three finger combinations. And you can also do it diatonically, meaning you just pick a scale that you like. In this one, it's gonna be three notes per string. And then you play these variations throughout the whole scale instead. So both are really useful, it just depends on where you're at in your sort of guitar journey. And if you're not really familiar with the scales yet, I would work on those separately first, because if you try to apply this exercise right away, it's probably going to be a bit of an overload because you, you haven't gotten your motor memory around the actual patterns yet. And then you have to try to fit that in with all the scales and then it can become really unnecessarily frustrating. So in that case, I would suggest you do it systematically first. And that's always good anyway, because you make sure that you don't miss any combination and then you can move on to working on specific uh, scale shapes. So the exercise goes like this. I'm gonna demonstrate it now just with one, two, four on all six strings. So one, two, four, one, two, four, meaning the fingers here, one, two, four. And the sequence is gonna be one, four, 
two, four. So we've done this one before in a, in a previous legato lesson video, but this one goes deeper because we're gonna use the loop method to find all four variations on this one. So basically it's gonna be the, the standard pattern and three variations. And we find these variations by actually numbering the notes here. So we got one, two, three, four. So that's one variation where you start on one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. But then you can also start on the second note and go two, three, four, one. And that's, a, that's its own loop. So that sounds like this. And then we can keep going like that. So we start on the third note. So we got three, four, one, two. And then finally we have four, one, two, uh, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I call this the loop method and it's a really good way to find variations on whatever you're practicing. And as you, as you heard here, they all sound different and they also feel different, even though technically you're moving the fingers in the same order, you're starting at a different place. So once you get into sort of a loop, it should feel the same, but it doesn't. And that's because we play, <clears throat> and that's because we play with our brain and our ears. We don't play with our fingers necessarily. So if you're used to playing this and you're used to hearing this, you're gonna be a bit confused first when you start doing this. So that's why it feels a bit weird. I think this is essential though to practice pretty much anything you do in a, anything you can loop, you should practice this way basically because that will enable you to be really secure in playing this initial sequence as well because you know that wherever you, you start this sequence, you're gonna be good, you're gonna be able to get through it. So it really strengthens your overall technique when you do this. So we're gonna apply this now to the fingerings. One, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. I'm not gonna play through everything here. I'm just gonna show you the sequence and I'm gonna show you the sequences using one, two, four. So you want to apply this yourself on the remaining fingerings, right? And you just choose a fret here and you choose a different fret every day. Okay, so start so on the fifth fret and then just a normal sequence, so. So I'm gonna play that up and down the string. So I played once on each string. Once I get here, I restart on that string. So I want to cover each string twice. So that's why I go from the low E string or if you have a B string, you start there. Go all the way up one rep per string and then you return uh, again, but you restart on the string that you ended on. So that enables you to get two reps on each string. So you even everything out here. Uh, might be a bit, you know, super fussy about this stuff, but I think it's important in the long run that you get an even amount of reps on all the strings. Anyway, so you don't want to stop like I did. So basically it should sound like this, but at whatever tempo you feel relaxed and everything is uh, accurate. So. And it's up to you if you want to re-pick this one when you restart. I didn't do it here, I just went, kept it legato. In that case, you can just keep it legato in the way that you only pick when you change strings. Uh, so that's the first exercise. And then we're gonna play the first variation now. And again, to find that, you number the notes of the initial sequence. One, two, three, four. And then you start on two. Two, three, four, one, and sort of get a feel for the sound and also how it feels. So then you do the same thing, you just go up the strings and down again. So go like this. As you can see, my fingers move a bit robotically and that's by that's on purpose because I want to get that transition time going so I, I always try to keep the motions as quick as possible 
So if we go to the next variation now, so to find that, one, two, three, four, so you will start on three, so you get three, four, one, two, all right? And then finally the last one, so that will be one, two, three, four, so I'm gonna start on this note, so it's gonna be four, one, two, three. Then you're done with the one, two, four fingering, and then you want to go through with one, two, three, uh, one, three, four, and two, three, four. I mean, I guess it's more logical to start with one, two, three, and then one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. But as long as you do all of the combinations, you're good. So like I said, do this in a new position every day. If you want to be systematic about it, you can cover the fretboard in five different zones. You get one through four, five through eight, nine through 12, 13 through 16, and 17 through 20. So try that out as well. Uh, can be a fairly quick workout, so it doesn't take a long time, but it really helps you wake up the fingers if you're just picking up the guitar for the day. Just make sure that you listen to your body and don't push through any type of pain or if you get any tingling or anything like that, just make sure to take a break because no exercise is worth hurting your fingers for. So really listen to your body when you do this stuff. All right, so make sure that you really listen to your body when you do this. As I said, it's super important. And one thing you can look out for is that your wrists are as natural as possible. So if you find yourself sitting like this, that's a big problem because you're gonna pinch the nerve here and you're going to get into trouble eventually. So don't do that. And just listen to your body, take frequent breaks and you will be good. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.